Hello everybody, welcome once again. Uh, we started recording um, and before we go ahead and get started with the session, uh, Dave, can I request you to please start us off with the word of prayer? Sure, Pastor. <clears throat> Father, we thank you once again for this wonderful day. We thank you that you are such a wonderful God. We thank you that you, you initiated the relationship that we have with you, Lord Jesus, we give you give your own son for for all of us to uh, to have that uh, relationship with you, Lord Jesus. As we learn how we are to do the worship ministry, Lord Jesus, I pray that your your spirit to be uh, upon our pastor, and that your spirit appoint anoint him as as he speak, Lord Jesus, and that you you speak, yourself give him the words that he needs. As we hear from him, Lord Jesus, I pray that your your spirit may work in each one of us, Lord Jesus, to 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 take, uh, to accept and to 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 understand and to comprehend, Lord Jesus, and everything that we are being taught, Lord Jesus, as today, Lord Jesus, and let uh, help each one of us to to apply all of those in our our, our ministry and in our daily life, Lord. God. We thank you for your grace once again. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Uh, right. Great. So, uh, until last week, we have completed 20 uh, sessions uh, of the course. So, today will be the 21st session. Okay. So, uh, it's 20 sessions, it's quite a bit. <laughs> I hope you've uh, been able to absorb everything that we've been learning. Right. Uh, let me just go ahead and, as we always do, uh, do a quick recap of of the lesson that we did uh, in, in in the last session. Okay, as a conclusion. So, um, we'll just do a quick recap from page sixty. Okay, page sixty. And this section, uh, we spoke about training the team in prophetic worship. Okay. Um, so this whole chapter is all about talking about the spiritual aspects uh, of worship ministries that is in from chapter five right um, to go through a quick glance we talk about how uh, our worship team members are expected to be worshipers on and off the stage right um, that's one and we spoke about a multiple uh, uh, para parameters or expectations uh, you know that will keep you strong in worship ministry and one of which is your spiritual growth uh, which you can uh, grow in God's word in God's spirit and in your individual area of your skill right uh, and then uh, have a check on your personal life of worship okay and then there's so many things that is packed in just that one point okay uh, check your personal life of worship, growing in skill and worship, growing in Christ-likeness. And we spoke about the five foundational areas of our focus, which is core, character, craft, chemistry, and community. We spoke about all of that in detail and how all of that can be like a pillar of its own, right? Uh, learning how to flow with the Spirit is another aspect that we learned in the last session. Um, supporting the minister or the pastor or the preacher uh, during the ministry time after the sermon. Um, and we discussed about it and how we function at APC. It does not have to be the same in uh, every church, right? Uh, but supporting the ministry uh, minister during the ministry time is uh, very crucial. And the, and the role of music uh, in ministry time, uh, you know, is, is crucial as well. Um, and then, after which is when we started speaking about the prophetic worship and how there are four dimensions for pro prophecy. One is the prophecy of scripture, how all uh, prophecies that are compiled in the canon of uh, Holy Scripture, like this prophecy of the end times as one of the examples. So that, that's one dimension of prophecy. The other dimension is the office of a prophet. Right? And if you've studied about uh, the fivefold ministry, one fold, one of them is the office of the prophet. So, uh, one of the fivefold ministry gifts to the church, and the purpose of this is to proclaim the presence, the purpose, the message of God. Okay, uh, 
to bring edification, exhortation, correction, uh, revelation, judgment, even rebuke. Okay, And then there is the gift of prophecy that has been given to all the believers by the Holy Spirit. Right? This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, It's a gift. Okay, we have to remember that. All right, uh, it's not just one of the things that you like you memorize, but it, it's 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 a beautiful thing that you know that the Holy Spirit is giving a gift. He want to give a gift, right? Uh, he, he he resides. He empowers in some of the believers as a ministry gift to the body, where we use this gift to uh, build to edify one another, right? Uh, it could be through a word of knowledge, uh, etc. And then the spirit of prophecy. Um, so all of these four dimensions, uh, you know, we can be used in a training uh, worship team uh, musicians, uh, worship team members in, in prophetic worship, and understanding and teaching them between the link between music and prophecy. Okay. Um, so these are all the points that we looked at uh, and concluded with some guidelines to move prophetically. How can you? Uh, go grow deeper uh, in prophetic ministry, right? Um, so, first one is the most basic and the most fundamental thing is to keep to have an intimate relationship with the Lord, to have a lifestyle of worship. And lifestyle of worship simply means you, uh, how you live your life, uh, the words that you use, the the things that you cho choose to see. Um, Etc. Etc. And so many other things, isn't it? Uh, a lifestyle of worship uh, and lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Okay, a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, and uh, just in connection with the senior pastor or a, a leader, or a worship pastor or a senior worship leader, or whatever, uh, should model all of this, right? having an intimate relationship with the Lord, living a lifestyle of worship, living a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, okay, and then intentional Bible study and meditation. Okay, um, so it, with that, we concluded uh, the spiritual aspect of worship ministry. Okay, uh, and I hope it's been helpful until then. And today, we will move into more practical uh, part of worship ministry and in this chapter we will talk about music and worship technology okay music and worship technology all right um it's going to be more practical uh it's some some of you might have heard of some of the things that uh, that we are going to be discussing some of you may have not but it's fine Okay, so let's just quickly just read this section. So sound system for use in worship settings. Uh, one of the key things that we are going to talk about is the sound system, isn't it? Now, think about it. Uh, yes, the sound system is used by the secular people uh, in the world, right? This, in the studios, in, in the cinemas, the movies, and, and whatnot, right? Live concerts by secular bands as well. But you know, why is it important for us in worship ministry in the church, right? Uh, having a good sound system helps us, you know, in amplifying the message of Jesus, isn't it? Uh, you know, to amplify everything that we speak. We, because we have a message that we want to share with the world. Yes, and there, yes, of course, there are different ways that you go about it. And then to share this message, one of the most important medium in today's day and age is the sound system. Okay, and that's what we're going to learn about uh, today, the different components that bring, that puts together, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, that helps a church service happen. Okay, so there are many things to consider when a decision has been made to improve or replace or install new church sound systems. Okay, so I'm going to just stop sharing the my notes and uh, have a PPT that I'd like to share with us.
just gonna hit the full screen for this. Now, uh, and I have to say this with experience, uh, there are a few churches as an exception, but in India, uh, it, like I said, it's this is my experience and my opinion maybe, um, and I might be wrong. It's, it's very challenging to convince uh, the leaders of the church sometimes to invest in a good sound system. Right now, again, there could be various reasons for it. Uh, you know, one, of course, the church may not be, genuinely be, not be able to afford or invest in a sound system. Uh, they might not have the financial support yet. Right, but that's one aspect of it. Right, where churches they do not legitimately, genuinely do not have financial support um, to invest in a sound system. And then there is another aspect where the church leaders they again genuinely they think it's a waste of money investing in a good sound system. Right, uh, so, so they settle for average something below par or whatnot, even though they are able to afford a good, decent sound system, right? So um, they are okay with uh, repairing, uh, re you know, spending a lot of money on, on repairing the old uh, equipments, you know, instead they would not invest in a new one. But uh, this chapter is all about that. And also this chapter was originally designed uh, to be more real, practical in in the sense where I would wanted to, I originally wanted to take the bunch of students to uh, the church, the central uh, location, and show them uh, what each of these equipments or the you know equipments uh, do, like you know in person. Um, and so, if you are not able to completely follow uh, what we are talking, um, don't worry, it's okay, and uh, I'll try and explain it as. Uh, as, and make it as simple as possible, and that's why this PPT as well. Okay, so one of the first components uh, that we have is the microphone. Right, uh, we all know what a, how a microphone looks like, uh, what it does with the microphone. You can speak louder. It amplifies your voice so that you can speak to a larger group of people. Yes, um, and one of the industry standards industry standards uh, is this uh, brand called Shure, S-H-U-R-E, uh, SM58 is the model that, you know, the model that you see. Okay, so, uh, and also simultaneously while you're looking at the screen and also your notes, uh, you'll see the definition there for microphone is simply put, the microphone is the first device in the system to capture a sound source and put it into the sound system. And many different uh, mics are available for many different applications. Okay, uh, there are mics for voice vocalists. There are mics for instruments, uh, choir, wireless mics, etc. Okay, so um, the mic picture to the left is a Shure SM58, which is considered as a standard of sorts for vocals, um, and it it's about uh, 7,000 rupees or something now, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, but like I said, you get, uh, just like, uh, you know, you get uh, mobile phones these days, there's one for every budget range, right? From 2,000 rupees, 3,000 rupees to a lakh and above, right? It's the same thing with the sound system uh, in this context, microphones. Uh, but there are cheaper microphones than than SM58, like I mentioned, SM58 is almost seven to eight thousand rupees, depending where you buy it from. And you do get microphones for two thousand rupees, thousand five hundred, um, three thousand rupees, and whatnot. Okay, so see what fits the budget, uh, and uh, what fits uh, in what fits the budget of the church, and you can go for it. Okay, so this is what a microphone does; it amplifies it. Okay, um, and also just before we continue. You might be wondering, okay, why do I need to know all these things, right? We are talking about worship ministry. Do I really need to know about all this, uh, Roshan? Uh, but yes, 
right? You uh, that's a simple answer. Yes, you need to know the, at least the basic. And yes, this everything that we're going to learn today is just the basics of it. Okay, it's not an um, a course on uh, sound sound engineering and whatnot. Okay, it's just very basic information because you will be handling all these stuff. You will be handling all these equipments, or if you're a if you're a worship pastor or a senior pastor of a church, you will have a worship pastor or the sound, uh, you know, uh, engineer of your church, will come and ask you, saying, okay, you know, two mics got spoiled. We need to buy two SM58s, or you know, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So having the basic knowledge uh, of all these things will help you, uh, you know, even if you're not directly involved with worship ministry. It will help you because even if you don't sing, uh, you might end up preaching, and for that you will need a mic, isn't it? And so you need to know how to put the mic on, off, and all of that. So, yes, it's in a way very directly linked to the worship ministry, and that is why we are learning about it today. Okay, I hope that's okay. Um, so, from the microphones, the uh, we the next important component is the mixer. Right, the soundboard. <laughs> okay, um, so what is a soundboard? Uh, if very popularly, what we call is a mixer, but the technical term is a soundboard. Okay, so this is the nerve center of any sound system. Okay, any sound system, uh, like a good one needs to have a mixer, okay? It is used to connect all microphones, instruments, um, CD, cassette players, uh, you know, back in the day, um, you know, to your amplifier and speakers. The measure of the soundboard at its most basic level is the number of channels it has, okay? So uh, I'm going to explain all of this, guys, so don't worry. So the second point here is the measure of the soundboard or a mixer at its most basic level. It simply means the number of channels it has. Uh, okay, remember that word channel. Okay, it's going to come in handy as I explain. Um, a separate channel is needed for each mic, instrument, etc. Secondly, the number of tone controls auxiliary and the effects sends one each channel so you see this big big um, mixer isn't it but they come in all different sizes okay they come as small as this and as big as this and also the medium sizes like these okay um so one of the things that we spoke about, uh, sorry, and this is the um, the back side of the mixer. Okay, let's go back to this one for a second. Uh, you remember we spoke about this thing called channel. The measure of the soundboard at its most basic level is the number of channels it has, right? So you look at this small one and you see this numbers here, one and two, right? Uh, so this mixer, uh, in a way, it has uh, two main channels, okay? So you see this one over here, and everything that comes under one. This whole thing is cha one channel. And this whole thing here is the second channel. All these controls are for this channel only. And, and I'll keep explaining, don't worry. And then you see this a little bigger mixer here, isn't it? And you, we can just count these. I hope you can see my cursor move, uh, but yeah. So if you just count these, for example, I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. Um, so that cha that mixer has sixteen channels. Now it says a separate channel is needed for each mic instrument etc what does that mean roshan okay so you now say this is channel one this is channel two this is channel three okay how many of us are in class one two three four five six seven including me okay let's say um kannan is going is going to be singing so his mic will be connected to channel one this is channel one okay 
and say Dave is going to play the keyboards. So the keys will be connected to the second channel. All right, Kiran is going to be singing and Neelam is going to be singing as well. So two more mics, this is channel three, channel four. And, uh, and Thomas is going to be playing the guitars. Right, and, and someone playing the bass guitar. So, so that way, that's why different channel is needed. Okay, so where you can increase and reduce uh, the volume and, and whatnot. So there are uh, many things that, that you can do, okay? So when you look at the back part, the back side of the uh, of the mixer, right? So again, let's you see these numbers here? Let's say one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 16. That simply says that there can go, you can go up to 16 inputs, okay? 16 input uh, directly. And then there is the output section. So all of all of this is input section, and all of this is output. Now, what is the output? Okay, from it is from the output where the the speakers are connected to. Okay, um, separate wire goes from this, and it goes to, all the way to the, to the speakers. Um, and so this is the output section, and this is the input section. So if you can understand this in the mixer, you are sorted. Okay, you will know what goes. Uh, where okay um, now in, in all in in the mixer right now do you uh, this is a small one so I'll use this okay uh, just look at this image and also look at your notes uh, you have under mixers you have tone control you have auxiliary and effect right you have tone controls auxiliary and effect now, to simply uh, give us a very simple definition of what tone control is, when you look at this image here, uh, you see this thing, it says high, right? High and mid and low. Okay, high, mid and low. Um, it's like, uh, I'm, again, I'm not sure if you've seen one of those old uh, music systems. Uh, or in your cars, you know, those old days. Now everything is touchscreen, but uh, it'll have these three knobs. It'll say bass, uh, mid, MID, you know, mids, or treble. Okay, so so treble is for high frequency, as it says. Okay, so if you see high, it means also, it also means treble. Okay, it's very high. Okay, that one. And the mids uh, is somewhere in the middle frequency, and then the lows are the bass. Okay, so um, so that's that's what the tone uh, basically does. Okay, um, if you want the definition that is mentioned there, it says tone controls are used to fine tune each channel, and the more controls available, the more control you will have in fine tuning the sound. Okay, now uh, some of you might have seen me, uh, you know, come to APC North or you know, you might have also been uh, at Central. I, you would have heard the vocalist or or someone, any instrumentalist saying, hey, can you increase the bass a little bit uh, on my vocals? Can you increase the treble a little bit on my vocals? So the person at the mixer, what they will do is when the vocalist says, uh, increase a little bit of treble on my voice, they will turn this knob, a you know, the clockwise. They will increase it. So the high frequencies will be increased just a little. Okay, so that's what a tone does. Um, now, there's another thing in the notes. It says auxiliary. A short form for auxiliary is aux, A-U-X. Okay, just aux. Now, uh, what it does is, now in this, now this mixer is uh, too small to have a uh, aux uh, channel. But let's just, I hope you can see this big one, right? And then you have all these knobs that you can turn, okay? Uh, so right about these gray knobs over here, okay? I'm sorry, guys, I'm just, can you all see that? Even when you move my cursor, just let me know the yes or no so that I'm not making, 
Uh, I'm not complicating. You're not seeing the cursor? When I do, when I move it like this? Okay, Kiran says no, she can't see the cursor. Uh, everybody else can't see it? Like, when I move my computer's cursor? Okay, uh, what about uh, the others? No, it's not moving. Now? It's still not? Okay. No, Pastor, here now. Okay. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Um, I was under the impression that my cursor was moving. Um, okay. Uh, but so what I'll do, uh, just for this mixer section, okay, I have a video that, you know, from YouTube that uh, someone will show what uh, the tone, the aux, the effects does, okay? So we'll uh, look at that and we'll come back to this PPT, all right? Okay. First an explanation, and then a live example. There are two mysterious knobs in the middle of the EQ section of your mixer. Have you ever wondered what they're for? Well, this is the mid-sweep area of the EQ, and if you're a sound engineer, you'll know all about it. But for most people, they're a bit of a mystery. Well, I'm going to show you an amazing tip that will noticeably improve your sound. And it's easy, which is nice. OK, let's get the technical stuff covered first. We'll be looking at one channel of the mixer at a time. The signal passing through this channel is split into three parts. High frequencies, the mid frequencies, and the low frequencies. The top knob here deals with the high frequencies. At 12 o'clock, this knob has no effect on them. Turn it clockwise through 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock and so on, and it's boosting the high frequencies. Turn it anti-clockwise through 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, etc., and it reduces or cuts those frequencies. You've probably played with that and found a position that suits your sound. The bottom knob does the same for the low frequencies. But the mid frequencies are different. The third knob down boosts and cuts like the top and bottom knobs but it doesn't act over the whole mid-range, and that's where the second knob comes in. This one chooses which part of the mid-range the third knob acts upon. So, if I turn the second knob fully anti-clockwise, the third knob will boost or cut the lower end of the mid-range, and, similarly, if I turn it clockwise, the third knob will act on the upper end of the mid-range. OK, how do we use this mid-sweep facility? First, turn the third knob up as high as possible. If you get feedback, turn it down until it's echoey, but not feeding back. Then, sweep the second knob from fully anti-clockwise to fully clockwise, listening for when the sound is at its worst. Okay, so I'll just stop that. For now, just uh, that was just for us to get an idea of you know of the tone, uh, what it does, right? Just basically increasing the highs, the lows, uh, mids, and the uh, the lows. Okay, uh, and the other one that I was talking about, which was uh, the aux, uh, AUX or auxiliary, which is also mentioned in your notes. Um, where is that? Okay, um, now. Once again, uh, you, you know, a person leading in the front with an acoustic guitar will say, you know, I've said this so many times uh, when Akozo was at North, you know, I'll say, hey, Akozo, can you increase my acoustic guitar on the monitors? 
right? So there will be uh, a small set of speakers right in front of the musicians on stage. Okay. So what aux does is when he increases or reduces the aux, uh, that you know the different channels that we spoke about, the channel for mic and guitar, etc. Your so your guitar will have a separate channel. So when he increases the aux. He will only do that for the guitar, and so the guitar volume increases just for me. Okay, so that's um, and all of that is done with the mixer on the mixer. Okay, so it's important to have uh, you know a mixer for your church um, and whatnot. So depending on the need, uh, you know, of your church and the size of your church and the budget of your church, you can invest in either a small one or a big one. Uh, an analog mixer or a digital mixer. Okay. Um, now another thing I mentioned uh, in the notes, uh, another component for sound is equalizers. Uh, okay. So the next the next component is the system that would be called the equalizer. Okay. So what it does, an equalizer or EQ is a sound engineering tool that adjusts the output of different frequencies. Okay, from all the way from 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz. Okay, um, the the sound range is really huge, and so it allows you to cut or boost the levels of specific frequencies. Okay, um, so this is how an equalizer will look. Okay, uh, whatever you're seeing on the image, uh, it could be just one or two like that. Okay, uh, basically there are you know a lot of sliders but there are also graphic equalizer this is a graphic equalizer like you get all these model ones on uh, um, on your ipads or you know touch screen you can also use them on your phones now so all of this you see it says equalizer here and you can increase again the low frequencies you can get more minute uh, about it okay now this is not necessary uh, you know, that you need to have it like, okay, you know, because it is expensive. Okay. It's like, it's not 100% necessary that, you know, your church needs to have an EQ. This is an addition. Okay. It's uh what do we say? It's a bonus. Okay. So if you have it, it's, it's like a luxury. Okay. You can tweak the sound more carefully for it to be more precise. Okay. Uh, these are all used in certain like say every room is different right like my room can be the acoustics of this room will be so so much different from the room that you are in okay and if i clap uh there will be one frequency so for example um there's also you know a drum kit at the back and um, if i if i play a certain note on the keyboard the snare drum vibrates even when it's not being played if I play a certain note on the keyboard, like a low, let's say A, the snare will vibrate. So that's because of the sound that's emitted from the keyboard. The snare is tuned to the same frequency. Okay, so that's what frequency means. Uh, you know, it's you can control the frequency more minute in more detail. Okay, so that's why that's the use of an equalizer. Okay. And then as we go into the next page, page 63 in your notes, uh, another component is amplifiers. Okay. Um, I hope you can see the image. The, now, again, just like every other equipment, just like the mixer, the amplifiers will come in different shapes and sizes. Okay. Depending on, on your need, because the needs are subjective to every church. Uh, there will be small, medium, big one, expensive one, a cheaper one. So uh, there's there's one to fit your budget. So what does an amplifier do? Okay, the loudness of an audio signal is signified by the amplitude of the signal. Okay, or the volume of it. So when the signal travels through the wire, you know, we, we fix the cable from one end to another, okay? The signal travels through the wire. The resistance of the wire causes reduction in its power, okay? When a signal is going from the acoustic guitar or from the mic to the speakers, somehow the 
because of the resistance of the uh, wire, it, it reduces the power of the signal, okay? The amplifier increases the strength of the signal, so it reaches a longer distance before fading. So that's what amplifier does, okay? It sustains the sound from the mic to the mixer to the speaker to keep it strong, okay? Making sure it reaches, a, the no signal is lost. And by using amplifiers at different stages, the audio signals can then be safely transmitted over a wired connection. So the rise in amplitude is called amplification. Okay, the rise in amplitude is called amplification. And that is why this equipment that does this is called an amplifier. Okay, it, it's like another word for a magnify. Uh, you know, ma what magnified magnification does, it makes small things big, isn't it? So amplification, what it does is it makes, you know, weaker signal or the signal that is received stronger or even louder. All right. And the next thing in the notes is uh, speakers. We all know what speakers do. We all know what speakers look, look like. Again, they all come in different shape and sizes, uh, you know, there are, certain, there are speakers for that will support the high frequencies and the low frequencies, and there are subwoofers that only cater to, uh, you know, that supports the low frequencies, right? Which gives you more bass, more thump, as they say, right? Um, so the main speakers should be located at the front of the stage and just in front of the most forward microphone. Um, there are some technical aspects of it uh, that's there. So what happens is um, if the speaker is very close to the microphone or is the, if the microphone is right in front of the speaker, there will be this feedback, right? Um, you know, this, what is a feedback? What do you mean by feedback? You, we, we, we would have all heard this sudden, you know, increase in this volume, like, eek, and we'll all go, hey, what is that? You know, uh, so that is a feedback. Uh, if a mic is too close to the speaker because of the signal, it clashes and it, it, it produces this high frequency noise. Okay, so to avoid that, the speakers and the microphones should be placed properly. The size should be judged by the size of the room. Which size speakers do I go for? Right, that's a classic question. So the size should be judged by the size of the room and the quality of the sound needed. Also keep in mind that will be sent through these speakers. The pre-recorded music from the CDs, etc., and all mics are minimum. Okay, um, so that's that's about speakers, guys. Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions so far regarding the equipment? Or are you following everything? Coherency is clear, okay. Okay, next time uh, when you're in Bangalore, Kiran, we'll, uh, you'll set up the sound system at North. <laughs> Everybody else is uh, doing all right. Thomas, uh, any questions? Yeah, uh, Dave? Okay. No questions, sir. Okay. Okay, good. Let's let's look at the next it's component. Clear, okay, Thomas. Thank you. Well, there's a very interesting component, uh, a piece of equipment that's after speakers. It's called the snake. <laughs> Sorry, what? The snake? Yeah, snake. Okay. Um, let's let's just look at the the definition of snake, and I'll explain to you what it does. Okay. A snake is a special cable used to extend, okay, it is used to extend the soundboard or the mixer's inputs and outputs. So the board is free to be located in the best possible position. Uh, remember the number of channels in your board should match the number of channels in your snake. Okay, important to remember the number of channels in your mixer, if it's 16, if you are using a 16 channel mixer, it, you should have a 16 channel snake. I'll explain in just a second. So if you have eight channel snake, it won't help if you have 20 channels on your board. So there are some exceptions though. So 
uh, vice versa okay but if you look at the ppt uh, this is what a snake looks like okay now it this is a pretty uh, it has a pretty long cable so what it does you see uh, you know the other big end one end will be on stage where the mic uh, the guitars the keyboards the drum mics the bass guitar uh, you know cables everything will be connected to one end and the other end because it's long it will be all of these uh, small wires will be connected to will be sent to the mixer okay and if you've seen it central uh, the mixer will be far away from the stage right somewhere in the middle of the congregation okay so the snake cable has to be long to go to that distance okay so that's basically why uh, you know snake is like a bridge between the stage uh, and the mixer that's that's what it is okay the snake is like a, a bridge that connects the musicians and the equipments on stage to the mixer board that is off stage down. Okay. Uh, now, once again, this is another equipment. Uh, it's. I wouldn't say it's. Uh, it's it's fifty fifty. It's it, it's good to have this, uh, and it's also not uh, you know urgently important. Uh, you know, it's not like the top priority. But this is again analog, guys. Uh, you know, there's a lot of money that is being spent on this, making this. Uh, you know, uh, and it can also very easily get damaged. These cables. Now, if any of these channels, one of these channels, get damaged, uh, it will cost you a lot of money to repair it because it's very hard to. You have to search which wire is cut, or you know, and. You, you might spend weeks, uh, some days or weeks in just trying to find out which wire is cut. So that's a lot of time and effort. That's why it costs a lot of money. And, and that's why a lot of people this day and age have moved to digital mixer. So instead of this just snake with all these big uh, cables and heavy cables, now all, they, all you get is one single Ethernet cable just one small very light wire that connects all the way from the stage to the mixer um and it does it does exactly what the snake does okay but that again because it's digital it's expensive all right so uh definition and audio snake is essentially one physical cable that combines multiple audio cables within its body snakes come in in a variety of lengths a number of channels and connection types Okay, uh, and finally, we have, uh, not finally, sorry. Uh, next we have the FX processors. Okay, and this is again, this is how it looks like, the FX processor. Okay, there are different brands out there. So what it does, uh, FX devices can be used to enhance the overall sound of your system, okay? It is used to enhance the overall sound of your system. Once again, this is not a need. This is, uh, I mean, this is not like a want. It's a, it's a luxury, okay? Uh, if your church can afford this, that's great. It will enhance the whole sound, okay? What is it used for? Uh, effects uh, simply means that you can add some reverb or some delay, uh, you know, to the, to the sound that's being heard, okay? Uh, what, what is a delay, you know? Um, for example if you say hello there's an echo that goes with it right like hello 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 <laughs> right and you clap something and the clap keeps you know uh, keeps getting repeated and kind of fades right so those are all called the effects or a, you know and one of that is delays okay that's what you use these for fx processors um it's a wonderful addition a wonderful bonus uh, to have in your sound system uh, of the church, if you know, if you can have it, uh, and then finally, uh, the monitor speakers. Monitor speakers. So this is how how a monitor speaker looks like. Okay, uh, and it's usually kept on stage right in the front, like these. Okay, again, they come in different shapes and sizes, um, but yeah, 
monitor speakers are used to provide sound to the performers and and speaker okay um it, it, this is very important um to have otherwise uh, the musician or the person who is singing right in the front won't be able to hear what they are singing so for them to be able to hear what they are playing uh, what they are singing uh, that's why the stage monitors are used okay so again as i always say depending on the size of your stage um, in a number of musicians in your team you can choose to have two or three uh, stage monitors okay so everything that we've covered so far is from microphone to mixers that they come in all different shapes and sizes including the microphones in all different budget uh, there are mics for your uh, for instruments there are mics for vocal wireless cordless mics etc uh, and this three sub aspects of what uh, everything that is uh, in uh, in the mixer that is tone controls aux and effects and the equalizers, amplifiers, snake, effects processors, and monitor speakers. Okay, um, I hope you were able to follow and understand something, uh, you know, and it is really going to help you uh, communicate get better with your worship team uh, once you've understood these basic uh, fundamentals of sound. All right, so before we continue, we'll take a break and, uh, and, and resume with the rest of the remaining lesson. Okay, take it guys. <laughs> 